So I received lots of books for Christmas. Hey there, it's Mitzi. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you the books I received for Christmas. My family came through for sure. So um, I'm going to try to go through this as quick as I can because there are lots of books here. But I'm really excited to share them with you. Uh, the first one is another Agatha Christie. This one's The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I am trying to collect these hard covers with the foiling. I don't know who puts these out. But I think they come out with one like every year or something. And I don't have a lot of the ones uh, that they've already published. But I do have a good handful of them. And so I am trying to collect these. So for birthdays and Christmas, uh, usually one of the boys or my husband um, gets me one of these. And this one, of course, is beautiful. They always have beautiful end papers and the great foiling. And the way that the book feels, I love the um, the print in these. The font's great, too. So I highly recommend these, and thank you for that one. Um, I also received, this book has been on my TBR for a very long time, and this is a, um, this is a little Penguin classic. It is the uh, paperback of J.L. Carr's A Month in the Country. I've heard great things about it. It's not that long, so I do hope to get to this one. I think I'm going to put this one on my cart to read soon. And then I have wanted to read more Elizabeth Googe. And there are lots of Elizabeth Googe books I still have to read. But this one is one that everyone recommends to me. And it is A City of Bells. And I love the cover of that. I thought that was just really pretty. So I've heard great... Th I think this is... Oh, it says The Cathedral trilogy. I don't know if this is the first one or not, um, but I've been wanting to read this one in particular for a long time. And then I'm going to save this one because that's my favorite. My son, uh, he buys a lot of, um, he read, my son reads a lot of theology books. And so he always picks me up something the theological. And this is by John Bunyan, and it's called Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ. This is one of those Puritan paperbacks by Banner of Truth. If you like um, any kind of Christian theology type books, especially anything that the per the especially anything that the Puritans wrote, I highly recommend Banner of Truth. They do a great job of binding up old, um, out-of-print kind of books that the Puritans wrote or um, just, you know, all the famous preachers back in the day. They do a great job with their binding and their editions. And so he picked this one up for me. I think he'd gone to some sort of conference where the Banner of Truth had a booth set up or something and he picked this one up. So I'm going to put this in my nonfiction pile. And then he picked me up one that I had been wanting. Uh, this is by Jason Baxter. It's The Medieval Mind of C.S. Lewis. How Great Books Shaped a Great Mind. Look at the cover of that. That's gorgeous too. This one's not very long, but again, it's nonfiction. So nonfiction takes me a little bit longer to read. And after reading the Chronicles of Narnia this past year with my son, we had such a great time reading that. I want to just keep reading as many of the C.S. Lewis things that I can read, as well as things about his life. So that is another one I, I had actually wanted. I had that on my wish list. And then I had this uh, book under the tree. I thought this looked really like, they know me because it looks like something I would like. It's called The Lady and the Highwayman by Sarah Eden and it looks Victorian. So, yeah, it's a Victorian romance that pits author against author. Now, I don't know about romance, um, but I do like a little bit of romance and as Victorian, I'm, I probably will like it, but I'm, I am interested in reading this one. This is one that I've been wanting. It is The Homemaker by Dorothy Canfield Fisher. Look how gorgeous that is, too. I love these books by Persephone. Persephone has these beautiful gray covers with beautiful end papers um, in all of their books. And sometimes they will actually have um, these colored 
cover art uh, pictures on the front of them. But it, either way, they're great books. The way that they bind these are great. I like the way that they have the flaps. You can actually use that like to save your, your place in your book. But Persephone has come out with some really good books that um, were, you know, out of print and now they brought them back. And that is a great way, if you're like me and you like to read older books that are hard to find, check out Persephone because they have a lot of those kind of books there. So that was another one I'm excited about. And uh, let's see, oh, this one is one that I had asked for as well. It's Dickinson. It's one of those Everyman's um, Library books. I like these little pocket poetry books and I'm trying to slowly but surely gather up these little pocket poetries and this one is Emily Dickinson. Yes, I'm still drinking out of a Santa Claus mug. <laughs> Now, something else that my family always seems to uh, pick up for me are penguin cloth bounds. And this time, they got me uh, two of the little ones. And I thought these were so cute. They're beautiful, of course, cloth bound, the penguin cloth bounds. This one is The Mask of the Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe. Of course, I've already read this one because I love Edgar Allan Poe. And this one, I've already read too, Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. And I think in this one is... Um, other short stories, not just the lottery, but I love the lottery. So that'll be a great one to revisit and some of these others in this collection. I don't know if there's any others in here. There should be. Yeah. The Telltale Heart, The Fall of the House of Usher, The Pit and the Pendulum. So there's a lot of short stories in this one too. And they are just, look how cute those are. I just love the feel of these. So I don't have any of these smaller penguin cloth bounds, so I was excited to get these. And they usually give me a penguin cloth bound, so I was excited for that. Now, something else that my son, um, the one that buys a lot of theology <laughs> type books, bought me was this honking book. I mean, that is a junker. And it is St. Augustine's City of God. And look how long this thing is. I, I'm, I want to read it, but I am intimidated. It is over a thousand pages. So this will be one that I will need to just bite the bullet and just plow into and read a little along. Have you read City of God? Let me know. And then another um, Penguin paperback that I've wanted to read, and that's George Eliot's Daniel Deronda. This is one that is a Victorian classic that's on my list to read, so I was excited to get it. I mean, these are just, I love these uh, Penguin paperbacks. They are just beautiful. And they're so great to read from because of the flexibility of the um, floppy floppy spine. So I love these. Another one that one of my boys bought me was The Giver Quartet. I have read The Giver and I loved it. It was a five-star read for me this year and I kept talking about it to my son. So he picked up the whole set. It comes in this nice slip case and it has all four books in it. Not only The Giver, but Gathering Blue, Messenger, and Sun. And I haven't read those, so this will be a series that I will try to finish this year. But I loved the look of this, so I was excited for that. And then um, one of my boys also gave me Take Courage, Anne Bronte and the Art of Life by Samantha Ellis. I'm thinking that Art um, recommended this in his biographies. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but I think Art read this. Art, let me know if you've read this one if you watch this video. But this one is about Anne Bronte, and I love the Bronte sisters. I read a great book about all of the Brontes um, last year. Was that last year, I think? And it was great. And so I'm, I'm really interested in reading this one about Anne. And that's a beautiful cover, too. And then... Um, my husband, he he finds me these bookmarks. This one I love because it has owls on the front of it. It says, this is where I fell asleep. So it has owls. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it was um, made in 1972. And last year he gave me one that had been um, made in 1972. And then he found this one. Well, I was born in 1972, so for me it's special. And I love the uh, feel of these. I love these little bookmarks. And I am a sucker for a good bookmark, especially a vintage one. So I was excited to get that 
this year. And then this one, this is something I'm really excited about. My husband has been gradually buying me the Charles Dickens set in these um, beautiful copies. And he completed my set. So I needed um, Dombey and Son. And so he, he picked up Dombey and Son. And then he also found Little Dorrit. So now I have the entire collection in this beautiful, these are just gorgeous. They're gorgeous books. In this beautiful edition, I have all the Charles Dickens books now. So he completed my set. That was something I was really excited to uh, unwrap. Uh, this year at Christmas. They also bought me this that I just can't wait to get into. If you follow my channel, you know that during Victober, I decided to read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, and then I watched um, the Jeremy Brett version. So I would read the short story, and then I would watch the Jeremy Brett adaptation of that short story and I'm still doing that really enjoying that because my son has the whole DVD set of Sherlock Holmes uh, starring Jeremy Brett so my family bought me Miss Marple <laughs> and I am so excited because I have fallen absolutely in love with Agatha Christie over the past couple of years so when I opened this this is the BBC with Joan Hickson Miss Marple. I have never watched Miss Marple at all, so I'm really excited about this. This is, there's three in here, and I am so excited. It says, all 12 of Agatha Christie's classic Miss Marple stories. I cannot wait. I am so happy for this. So what I'm planning on doing, once I open this, I knew that one of my goals this year is to read all the Miss Marple. So I'm going to read all the Miss Marple books this year and then watch the episode. And I'm sure that my husband and my boys will uh, enjoy watching those too. But I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I love the Agatha Christie books I've read with Miss Marple so far. So this will be a goal for me to read the book and then watch the episodes. I'm so excited for that. So I have Y'all, I have got great things here. I'm just so excited about all the love that was shown to me through these books because they're funny about it. They're like, surely you want something else besides books. And I'm like, no, just give, give me the books. And they will come in here and look at my library and it's like, um, you've got plenty of books, lady. <laughs> but they know I love the books. I also received this shirt is To Kill a Mockingbird. I love the graphic tees with all the book related things on it. My husband bought me The Raven. It's Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. I have a Frankenstein. I can't remember, but I like to wear them in these videos. And he picked this one up as well as another one. And I'll show that in another video. So I, I, I received two um, t-shirts too, because I'm I'm a t-shirt kind of person. I, I wear these around the house and, you know, doing errands and things. I'll just wear these little book-related t-shirts. So I was excited. And they're very comfortable. They're very soft, too. So I was excited for that. And then my son, one of my sons, bought me the illustrated stories with uh, from Dickens. Now, this has just, um, I think, one, two, three, four, five Dickens stories. But it's told in illustrations for a child to understand. So it has these beautiful pictures in it and it's just, you know, an abridged version of the story. So I haven't read um, a couple of these. Most of them I have, but I haven't read a couple of these. So what I'm going to do is after I have read those couple of um, books, the actual novel, then I will pick this up and kind of review and celebrate those stories with this. But this is beautiful. It's actually very heavy. And the pages are, they're, they're thick and glossy. So it's a really well-made book. I mean, there is, that's Great Expectations. It's very pretty. So I look forward to, uh, this is like an easy reader version of Charles Dickens. Another book that uh, one of my boys bought me was, yes, they bought me another book. Uh, Benjamin Franklin and American Life. I've been wanting to read this. I'm trying to read more biographies. If you've read this, let me know. I'm excited about it. But I want to, I want to up my game on my nonfiction and especially biographies because I find that I do enjoy reading those. I just don't pick them up often enough. So this was uh, one 
that I had been wanting to read, and so I was excited for that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, my husband, my son and I, um, if you follow my channel, you know that we watch an episode of some old show every day. That's just what we do. We have our lunch, and then he drinks some tea, and I drink some coffee, and usually a little dessert, too. <laughs> and we watch an episode of some classic TV. Right now, we're going through The Twilight Zone, because that happens to be my favorite TV show. I love The Twilight Zone, and I can watch it over and over. So we're going back through it right now. Well, over the past few months, I have noticed that Charles Beaumont wrote a bunch of them. Because at the beginning, it'll say, based on the short story by, and a lot of them are Charles Beaumont. And I kept telling uh, my son, I'm like, I need to get some short stories by Charles Beaumont, because he wrote a bunch of them. So, guess what I received for Christmas? This is... Charles Beaumont, Perchance to Dream, and other selected stories, and it's in this gorgeous penguin. I actually read the penguin cover to cover. It was about the covers, and this one was in there, and I mentioned it. So, um, my husband picked it up for me because I had talked about it so much. So, I cannot wait to read these. I bet that several of these are the Twilight Zone ones, but he picked this one up and this one. They're both Charles Beaumont uh, stories. And I noticed that there's only one story that's the same. So, I was kind of impressed with that because, you know, a lot of times collected stories, it'll be repetitive, but not in these. So, this is lots of new short stories I can read, and I have been impressed with the Charles Beaumont episodes on Twilight Zone, so I was excited for that. And then, my husband knows that I love Daphne du Maurier, and I like the old vintage copies, you know, I like all the vintage stuff, and he found um, Mary Ann in this gorgeous vintage copy, still with the dust jacket on it. It has her on the back. Look how beautiful she was. And I just, I haven't read Mary Ann, so I was excited. But the book that brought tears to my eyes when I opened it was when I opened The Apple Tree by Daphne du Maurier. Y'all, this book, I have wanted this book for so long. Now, I have read The Apple Tree and the other stories in this. But this one actually has um, several short stories in it. And it has the birds in it. So that's why this one's hard to come by because you can't, everybody wants whatever edition had the birds in it. And that's what is in this one. So you can't find this one, but it is in the dust jackets in great shape, the book itself. So yes, I did have tears when I opened the apple tree. I was just, I mean, it is in great shape. So this was like the highlight <laughs> of opening uh, Christmas because I love Daphne du Maurier and I love all the short stories in this book. And I have been on the hunt for a good vintage copy of The Apple Tree. And I'm shocked that he was able to find one in such great shape. But he came through and he did. And this was one big surprise for me. So I was really excited for that. There's some other things here. Um, this is one that I had on my wish list by D.E. Stevenson, and it's Winter and Rough Weather. I love these furrowed middle brow books, and I can't wait to read that. Now's the time to read this one if it's winter, because I do like reading seasonally. Oh, and then my husband found me this too. Um, Art and I and Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf, we buddy read The Illustrated Man and Something Wicked This Way Comes last year by, I mean, yeah, this past 2022, because it's now 2023. Uh, we read those two by Ray Bradbury, and we just love them. And I'm trying to just collect as much Bradbury as I can get. And I know Art has quite a collection, and I think he's read everything. But my husband found these... It's like um, comic books, and they are the Ray Bradbury Chronicles. And he found one, two, and three. And they're in these little um, plastic wraps. But I cannot wait to get a hold of this. It says the authorized adaptations of the Ray Bradbury Chronicles. And it's in these, um, these comic book uh, kind of editions. 
So I have uh, one, two, and three in this. I don't know where he found it, but it was a great uh, set to add to my collection because I love Ray Bradbury, and I thought this would be super fun to read throughout the year. Just pick up and read some of these and celebrate some more Ray Bradbury. So those are the books. Whew, I, that's a lot. So those are the books uh, and things that I received for Christmas from my family. They know how much I love books, and I think they start collecting books for me throughout the year uh, to surprise me with at Christmas, and I was pleased as much to receive these. I can't wait to read them. Have you read any of these books, and have you received any new books uh, for Christmas or for your birthday, that was uh, a great surprise for you too. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.